Okay, now we have got our tumbler all spray painted whiteies off to the side drying. Uh, now we're gonna come in with our shaving cream. This is when it's gonna get real fun. Um, I've actually wrapped this paper around the cup and I made two little knocks, one on the top, one on the bottom, just so I know that it takes this much to go around the tumbler. Um, but we're gonna be doing this with a piece of paper. This is gonna basically be our base and then we're gonna drop our piece of paper onto that canvas to get the beautiful color. Um, this is kind of a reverse way of uh, doing an alcohol ink, but it gives you a really, really cool technique, uh, uh, texture to the cup. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna be spraying our shaving cream all around. It's gonna squirt out all the edges, doesn't matter. We're gonna get, we're gonna have some leftovers here. Then you're gonna take something like a popsicle stick or whatever you guys got around, spatula or something, and just kind of fill in the gaps. Like I said, it's going to um, spoosh out the side once we start wrapping it or pushing the paper onto it. I gave a little sneak peek of this on my Instagram and you guys all freaked out. You're like, wanna see it so bad. Just wait a minute. Okay, here we go. This is from my mad science laboratory. So I had to get it perfect before I could let you guys see it. All right, so now we've got like this little square of cuteness, of foam, it smells delicious. Um, and we're gonna take our alcohol inks and I'm just gonna drop them down in order of the colors that I want them. Ooh, that one's stuck. Oh, I'm gonna run out of room. I'm spraying so much ink. gonna have enough room for my, my last one but that's fine okay so we now we've got these gorgeous colors and we're gonna take our little spatula and we're gonna start mixing it out to get the the foam to be the color of the ink okay this is gonna take a couple layers to get it really vi if you want it really vibrant you're gonna have to do this a couple times okay and then we start blending it in And again, this is personal preference. It, you fluff these the way you want them fluffed. And you can do a beach scene with these. You can do a sunset with this. You can do just a squiggle with this. It does. It is just kind of your, the what colors you want it to make it, you do your thing. This is just me showing you a fun technique with alcohol inks. This is something you can get your kids involved in, have them do this part, super fun. They will love it, I promise. If they wear gloves, they can even do this squishy part, this part with their fingers. Yellow. The last little bit is orange.
And this is on parchment paper. I'm just doing this on top of parchment paper. You can do it on top of saran wrap, uh, paper, anything. You can do it how you want. I want this top layer to be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna add a little bit more here, make it a little bit more vibrant. And I'm gonna use a baby wipe to clean off my, my little popsicle stick. Stir that in a little bit more. There we go. And I think, I think the fuchsia I really like. The blue, I'm definitely gonna do some more blue because it looks a little bit more purpley. Still looks purpley, but at least it's more vibrant. Okay. And probably a little bit more yellow. So this is just like you just kind of play with it. Add as you go. Okay. Yellow's trying to turn green on me. Trying to turn green. Cause I'm mish, mish mashing it into the blue. Okay, so we're not, we're gonna stop fussing with it. Okay, now is the fun part. So now is when you take, whoop, I got, look at that. I got foam all over my hands. Gotta clean my hands. Okay, we're gonna take a piece of paper and we're gonna just gently press it down into the foam. And you actually wanna press until you start seeing it squish out and you actually see the paper start getting wet. Cause that's how you know it's absorbing the color onto the paper and that's what we want. So go all the way around, make sure you get in, if you see like these little nooks and crannies, press on those until you see the paper get wet in that area. Cause this is the important part. Otherwise you're gonna end up with big gaps in your paper that are gonna be white. Again, I just have done this trial and error Okay, and now I know to this, this little corner is, it didn't smoosh out in this corner. So I'm just gonna take the foam and put it under there and smoosh it and make sure it starts getting that wet look. Again, there's a little spot here, there's a little spot there. Okay, that looks pretty darn good. Now what we'll do here is we will leave this to sit overnight and the foam will kind of evaporate and it will give us a really, really cool texture on this piece of paper. So I'm gonna move this out of the way and we're gonna keep on working on a different tutorial. Hey guys. All right guys, so we uh, have the cup prepped uh, we got it taped off. We're going to start with um, glittering it now. Uh, we're going to do just basic white on this cup. We're going to do, we're going to use Bo. He's one of our top sellers. Um, we are going to apply it using the hang method. Um, now I'm going to mix a big batch of our Little and Rose pouring art epoxy. Uh, but we only need about three milliliters, uh, sorry, three grams. No, sorry. About <laughs> one to two grams uh, for the, to coat this entire tumbler. Uh, but I am going to be mixing a large batch because I've got other cups that I'm going to be doing full coats on. Um, 
so we're going to be mixing quite a bit. So I'm going to just get this going here, turn it on, let it set to grams. And we're just going to use a small portion of this larger batch um, to do this. But like I said, I needed to mix uh, a big batch anyway, so we are just going to do them all at, all at the same time. And you just want to do equal parts. You do it with our Little Ian Rose Epoxy, you want to do it by weight. Get almost there. All right. Now, normally I would be mixing this in the large um, epoxy mixer for from Little Lee and Rose, but I don't want to tease you guys because we are currently out of stock. You guys bought us out of stock in under 40 days. It was went they went really, really, really fast. They are back in production. Um, they are amazing. Uh, they keep it very, very low bubble, and it mixes it nice and easy. And you can go on and do a different project. Uh, but again, we sold out so rapid fast that we weren't, couldn't even possibly have expected that from you guys. It's been an amazing, amazing journey. Um, so we have got more under production and are on their way here. Um, so keep looking for those on our website. I recommend joining our Facebook group and you can hear about all of our new products and when the new products come in, um, you can get a first crack at them on the website. Um, and the Facebook group is super duper fun. Um, like I said, you've heard me talk about it. They, they are, and we're very, very interactive. We, we have um, our moderators do live teachings. I do a lot of live teachings. We do a lot of question answering. Um, you get a lot of help from um, people who have been in the industry for a long time and also some beginners. Um, it's great just to interact with other creative minds and people that do very similar things and to just get inspired by each other. And like I said, they push me and they kind of question me and they and they 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 tell me what they want to see and it kind of and it leads me in a good direction to keep teaching you guys here on face uh, youtube so the link for the facebook group is in the description below this just click read more underneath the youtube and you'll see the link for the facebook group we also have an instagram and a TikTok you can follow super duper fun and also the supplies will be linked down there as well so i'm just just getting this guy stirred up Our epoxy has um, a, a high heat tolerance of 340 degrees. Um, it's got the UV uh, resistance in it, uh, which is basically sunscreen, for, especially if you're doing a white, uh, white tumbler. Uh, it's low bubble. You can see I'm mixing a little bit fast here. Uh, with, the, with the epoxy mixer, it has even less bubbles. Uh, but uh, the epoxy, when you apply the epoxy, the bubbles tend to pop. Um, you don't even have to use a torch on them. It's amazing. But I'm I'm uh, I'm kind of vigorously stirring here to make the time go a little bit quicker. I did want to do it on camera. This is something usually I do off camera, but my head, my face group say a lot of the newbies they say I just I miss some steps because you do th things sometimes a little too fast. So I wanted to make sure that they saw you know this is where we mix for part A and this is going to be our first layer of hang method. This is how we're going to apply our glitter. We have our um, work mat down so that if any of the epoxy does drip off it will catch onto this work mat again this will be linked down below um, so you want to scrape all the sides and the you see I'm, I'm scraping 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 that way you make sure every little bit gets stirred up all right that looks really good there's no streaks um, it's gone kind of, it's gone pretty white sorry it's gone clear so that's an indicator that it's well mixed I'm going to set this off to the side for use down the road and we are going to just take this and put just a few mls on top and we are going to take this and work this down the cup so this is called the hang method where you just let the cup hang and you slide the epoxy off 
and around and start working it down. Now this takes some elbow grease. You should not, it should not be easy to do this process. If it's easy, you've got too much epoxy and you're, you're gonna see um, where your glitter will look almost like wavy because the areas where you have too much glitter, it will saturate the glitter. So, sorry, the areas where you get too much epoxy, it will saturate the glitter. And then the areas where you have a nice thin coat, it will just stick the glitter down. So that's why it's key to not over epoxy in this, in this instance. You want to use less is more. It should take work to work the glitter. I mean, sorry, to work the epoxy all the way to the bottom. Or I guess at this point, it's, it is the bottom now, but it's the top of the cup because it's hanging upside down. It should not be an easy process. You should have to really rub, continue going around, working that epoxy down the cup. If it just slides and glops down and you have drips coming off, that means you've used way too much epoxy and you should take some off. As you can see, I'm, just, I'm also making sure we don't have too much on the bottom. Still working it down the side of the cup. Again, you want to wear proper PPE gear. You want to wear your chemical respirator. That's why it's a little hard to hear me. I am wearing a chemical respirator, um, especially just for allergies. Um, even though our epoxy is low VOC, has less VOC than a ball of nail polish, it's still really important to wear your chemical respirator and your nitrile gloves uh, due to allergies or possible complications down the road. Um, you, can ha you can go one day without it being an allergy and the next day you've got an allergy. Um, you never know when it's going to shock you um, or change for you. Your body uh, can change with this particular product. But once it's dry, it is completely FDA compliant. All right, so now we've got this cup fully covered and it's ready for the next step to add glitter. So let's pull out our sheet. And I am going to hold the cup off the the drying rack. Pull this out. Gonna pop open the glitter. This is bow and we are gonna shake the glitter on. You can see absolutely how absolutely gorgeous Bo is. That's why we are using him as our color to base. He is so shimmery and shiny. Everyone loves Bo. Bo and Samuel are our top selling whites for their iridescence and just gorgeousness. They attract a lot of attention. We're gonna spin them around. Should we get the top and the bottom? Perfect. And we want to go around this brim. Make sure we get them all on there. Cover all the surfaces. And just do a little once over. Make sure all the little areas are covered. We can see a contaminant there, but I can get that after in just a minute. For good measure, we're just going to pour that a little bit on. Go a little bit left in the bag. All right. Now we're going to let turn him upside down, put him back on our drying rack. Pull this over, pull the drying rack back in. 
bump the camera, sorry guys. And we can leave him on the drying rack. You can even take this and tap it down. That gets all the extra bow off. And we're gonna let him sit uh, overnight and we'll do the next step. You really only need to let it sit for five hours, but I probably won't get back to this project until uh, tomorrow. Uh, so I'm gonna jump onto my next project using the extra glitter that we did. I'm gonna remove that contaminant little red bit right now so I don't forget. And uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, so now we have right here this gorgeous piece of paper um, that has all of the kind of interweavings of the uh, dyes and stuff that were in that foam. And you can see they both, each side looks a little bit different. Um, they're both very, very cool. Um, this side still has like residue from the foam. So we're just gonna brush it off with a paintbrush. Are you using just a, what are these called? Uh, these aren't called chip brushes. This is just like a little cheapy painter's brush that you can get a pack of these at the dollar store. And we're just gonna get all that off the back. And you'll be able to see there is a difference um, in the way the inks look on one side compared to the other. So this is just, like I said, this is just kind of dried up foam. And we're gonna just get rid of this and get the paper cleaned off. I should have worn gloves for this, dang it. <laughs> okay, moving this off the table. I'm gonna clean up just real quick, guys. I'll be back. All right, so you can see here where this one has this beautiful texturing. Um, on this side of the canvas. And this is the side that was touching the uh, shaving cream. And this side is more of like a soft, like tie-dyed shirt almost. It's absolutely gorgeous. Like I said, this is a really good method to get like a tie-dyed effect um, on your cup, but this is really just to kind of have fun. You can take this um, piece of paper and lay a clear vinyl over the top. Um, we have a clear printable vinyl, but you could, even if you just had regular clear vinyl, you could lay that over the top and, and, and cut it like regular vinyl. Um, we are gonna wrap it on the cup, just like so. Um, but I think I am going to use the textured side. Um, and this is meant to kind of look this well, we kind of uh, kind of used rainbowy-ish colors. Um, but this is gonna be real fun to apply. So I'm actually gonna now take this piece of paper because I don't want this piece of paper to lose any of this look. And if we add um, epoxy to it um, too early, it's going to kind of saturate the paper and it will start looking again more like this side. So I'm gonna take clear coat spray enamel and I'm gonna do three very gentle coats across the top. You don't want to oversaturate it with the spray paint again because it will do the same thing where it'll get the wet look. Um, so I'm going to do a very gentle coating across the top of this side um, with the spray um, enamel with uh, Rust-Oleum 2X Clear. All right, guys, and I'm going to do one coat, let it dry. Second coat, let it dry. Third coat, let it dry. All right, guys, so um, I am doing one of these in my Facebook group, and I was telling them that I was filming this also for YouTube so they can follow along, and I asked them which they would rather prefer me see is just Mod Podge this straight onto the cup or to turn this into a piece of vinyl, and they said that they would definitely rather see this turned into a piece of vinyl, um, that they that Mod Podging is, you know, they know how to Mod Podge and that they want to see it turned into a piece of vinyl. So this has a clear coat of um, the clear spray paint on both sides. Um, that way it doesn't bleed at all. Um, I had already prepped it for the Mod Podge um, situation, but it works for this application as well. Now this is a square of clear uh, vinyl. This is just clear, regular outdoor vinyl. It's um, from Oracle. It is just, you can get it really anywhere. Um, if you have it at a craft store, but you can also order from Oracle online or six, uh, vinyl, 651 vinyl online. Um, we are going to separate the backing and we're gonna whoop, be very careful laying that down the table. We're gonna lay it down on the table. Now, this is when I love this tool. I use it all the time, the roller from Cricut. I am not a huge Cricut 
product user. Um, I don't really like their vinyl, but this tool is awesome. I do know that, um, that you can get this tool also from Silhouette or there's other brands that make this style tool, but this is a roller to make it nice, lay nice and flat. So how we're gonna work this is, um, we're gonna go from the one side, the very bottom, and we're gonna just push, I'm gonna put it right in the corner and I'm gonna start rollering it. And the reason I'm rollering it is to, and I'm gonna do it very, very slowly, is to make sure there's no air pockets. And we're just gonna slowly roller this onto this vinyl. And work our way to the very top. Don't try to rush this process because you'll end up with air bubbles and they're very, very difficult to get rid of. I'm also using my finger in the back. You can see I've got my pinky finger kind of down, holding the vinyl down so it doesn't try to elect electrostatic lift up to the paper because it will try to do that as well. This is kind of gets a, a little bit of static to it and it'll try to lift up and cling. So I'm holding it down with my pinky finger so we don't get moving too fast here. Finish out the last little edge piece. And there you go, you have this beautiful piece of vinyl. So now you can stick it kind of back down on the square. You're gonna have a little overlap. I'm not too worried about getting it exactly on the square. We're just gonna stick it back down. And we're gonna roll from this side as well. Make sure there's no bubbles from one side to the other. Looks like we got a little tiny bubble right there. Work that crease out. All right, so now you have this coated, so it's nice and glossy and it's not you're not gonna struggle with it as much. And I would then take this and cut around the edges like this there you go so now it's we can put this in your um under your cricket and cut out like a name or shape and use it as a background or if you, since you have the, like the edges that are a little bit sticky, you can do kind of a wrap and that'll help you do a wrap. Um, you could even go back and do both sides and make it like a piece of, uh, uh, almost like, what do they call it, laminated. You could do it on both sides. I did end up with a little bubble here because I was rushing a little bit for YouTube. Rushing a little bit. See, that's why I say quick is slow, slow is quick. You want to go, you don't want to rush yourselves. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I will go print, I'll print out a big fun design on this and I'll do a shadow and I'll show you guys how to do that um, and how to lay this down onto your um, cup. All right, we'll get started on the next process. All right, guys, we're back. We're going to get this tumbler started. Um, I just had a genius idea. No, I'm just kidding. Becca, I just had a genius idea on how to use the vinyl on this tumbler and I'm going to go for it. Uh, but first, we're going to get the uh, a nice, good coating of epoxy over the top of this beautiful, bow, shimmery uh, glitter. So I'm going to just use my finger to apply here today. Quick lickety split. And we're going to get this cruising, and we're going to get the decals made from the vinyl. I may have to mix a little bit more. My cup was only so big and this is a beast of a jug i say that because you'll see how we're, we're going to do with the cup it's going to be real fun
This is the Little Ian Rose Epoxy Turner, sorry, Tumbler Turner. They are available on our website. It will be linked below in the, in the description below this tutorial. It is, it can hold these big old giant containers. I've had no problem doing the uh, big wine decanter containers and these big 32 ounce, or what is this, 40 ounce uh, hydro flask. Get some epoxy on the butt. The, um, the reason this works really well on here is because it's got the compression foam inside. All you've got to do is squeeze the foam down, push it inside the, the container, and then it re-expands once it gets inside the container and it holds it really, really well. Um, then to get it out, you can grab it with um, some needle nose pliers or your fingers if you have long skinny fingers and just pull it right back out. Um, I've had no issue pulling mine out. Um, it's, it's very durable. I'm just making sure we get right along this top edge real well. Sorry if there's any background noise. We are open air right now. It's hot and I don't want to have anybody get any kind of reaction to the epoxy. And so we've got the doors wide open and we're basically outside. So you can hear a lot of road noise and such, I apologize. There we go, and just make sure we got the bottom of the tumbler. We're rocking and rolling with epoxy. a little zhuzh, make sure it's covered. All right, so what you would want to do right now is go ahead and pull the tape. So we're gonna do that. So if the epoxy is fully covered, just give it a little one, one last glance all the way around, looking good. Save these little drips, I can make a little um, straw topper back, backing mold, straw topper holder. I'm gonna pull my tape. All right, so we are gonna now let this sit and we're gonna let that uh, for about nine hours, 10 hours. We'll get the app, we'll uh, add the decals tomorrow. Well, let's move that off to the side. is we're gonna bring in, I always wipe the table down in case there's like a little residue so I don't get my arms in it. Let's bring in our vinyl. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out um, tiger stripes, big tiger like claw marks and I'm gonna wrap them around that and it's gonna be a really fun tiger cup. Um, so I'm gonna design those in my Cricut Design Space and I'm gonna make them rather large um, and they're just gonna kind of wrap around the cup so that we get to use all the colors. And I'm gonna probably make quite a few of them and then we'll pick and choose from these which ones we wanna use. Um, we might not use them all on this cup. I could use save some for another cup, um, but it's super duper fun. So uh, let's jump out. I'm gonna make these in design space. Um, I will probably find the claw marks on Etsy um, or design them real quick in uh, Inkscape and uh, have my Cricut cut this out. I will cut this out using probably outdoor printable, sorry, out, premium outdoor vinyl, and I will cut it twice on the Cricut, um, do the cut lines twice. Um, make sure it cuts all the way through. Um, so we will be back soon, and we'll, I'll show you guys the decals. All right, so here we go. Look at how cool these came out. We've got 
there's one. I'm gonna cut out some more on this side. I just got excited and wanted to show you guys these off the backing. Um, I will keep these as scraps because, I mean, I will keep these, the paper, because I will use the paper with the tiger marks cut out of it because it looks super cool. But look how cool those look. And then look how rad that looks. So you could do even like a black cup and then wrap it and have the Vader poking through. Um, this is gonna go on our white bow cup. So now I'm gonna go and actually cut some more out in maybe a smaller size. So we have a little accents um, and do them here and here. I don't know, we're gonna keep having some fun. But how cool does that look um, with them removed? So we have this piece we take this off the slip. We now have this sheet of vinyl that we could wrap around a cup, just like this. Um, and I can also go in and cut some more out of this or cut a word out of this. Maybe I'll cut the words out of those. Oh, that's cool. Here we go. All right, so I keep changing what I wanna do with this tumbler. Um, I want to maximize the gorgeousness of this piece of paper that I created. And I cut out the claw marks that I was going to put them on here. But they just, they, they're, they're beautiful, but they just don't show the true amount of beauty and work of the massive piece. So I'm going to keep these little claw marks for another project. And we're going to use the piece of paper that we actually cut them out of to make this a divide tumbler. So the, this tumbler is going to go right on down here. Um, I've used a spray adhesive, Scotch spray mount. I've put it on the back half of the paper. The shiny side is down. So the one with, with the beautiful vibrant colors is face down. Um, and we are gonna go ahead and just set this tumbler down onto that spray adhesive and get it wrapped around. So we're just gonna do the basics and then we're gonna use our tool here. We're gonna use our special tool. We're just gonna kind of press it down. And this is gonna just kind of adhere it just like it would a piece of vinyl. Get all the cracks and crevices and bubbles out. And get it pushed down. And then we're obviously gonna have some extra space. Get that bubble out. We're gonna have some space and we're gonna cut this at a slight angle and then we'll come in here and we'll cut this at an angle. Um, and then we'll have this just really cool and we'll obviously slice along the bottom and slice along the top. And then we'll have the maximum amount of this really beautiful piece of um, vinyl that we've created with that shaving cream and those inks. So here is gonna be my little tip for you guys. All right, so here is my little tip or trick. You take popsicle sticks and you stack them up and you use um, painter's tape or electrical tape and you can figure out how high you need it um, to make your even cut. If you're not really good at doing straight cuts with the X-Acto knife, this way you can do a steady cut. So you take your X-Acto knife um, and you then can test it on, hold it to the cup and you can see right there is gonna be perfect. And then you take your painter's tape. So you stack as many popsicle sticks as you need for whatever cup you're using and wrap them. Then you take your painter's tape and wrap your um, X-Acto knife, whatever brand you have, onto those popsicle sticks. And that's gonna give you like a stable base and it's gonna make, help make it so you can get a perfect cut around. So just like this, we're just, this last wrap is gonna be just temporary so we can undo it and use our X-Acto knife And this is just going to help give you a steady line. If you if you have a steady hand and you can freehand cut it, go for it. This is just an extra step. So you can see here, you just hold it and it's going to press and then just slide it along. And you can see it's making a perfect edge. 
Looks like maybe I need one more popsicle stick so it doesn't ripple over the edge, but we'll just keep on going. We're just gonna, sh I'm just gonna show you guys this as an example. So I press down firmly on, you can see I've got almost white knuckling it hold, down to the table and then just doing a small section at a time, letting it peel, pressing, making sure it's pressed down that, that it, um, it's spray adhesive. It's gonna hold it in place for you while you make your cut. Make sure to keep your body out of the way so you don't cut yourself. Keep your hands well up and out of the way. There we go. So see, it gives you that nice, clean, smooth cut. This one is just a little wobbly because it wasn't sticking down. You might need a little extra spray adhesive to get that perfect. Nope, there it goes. So now we have that nice, smooth, straight edge. Like I said, we need probably one more toothpick, uh, popsicle stick, just to come up over the rim so we don't get this ripple. I'll do that in, um, so you guys, you guys, but you get the point. I'm gonna go in post-production that one. Um, and then you can do the same thing for the bottom or freehand the bottom. You can even just cut it with scissors and follow the base of the cup. Or you can do the popsicle stick if you want to have some space. So this is how you would do it if you wanted to go all the way to the bottom and then use a popsicle stick in your X-Acto knife if you want to have a little edge. So now we're gonna have this beautiful claw around. All right, I'm gonna take this out, one popsicle stick out of here and we're, I'm gonna clean that edge up and we'll be on to the next step. So right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and mix part A and part B of Little Lee and Rose Epoxy, and I'm gonna apply it all over the cup for our final coat. It should be nice and thick and cover up the vinyl and the phrase and finish this cup up and round it out real perfectly and nicely and come out as a gorgeous smooth surface and we'll be done. Don't forget to pull your tape. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you guys on the next tutorial.